In three days, Canadian journalist Mohamed Fahmy goes back on trial on terrorism charges in a Cairo courtroom. Now, Fahmy spent more than a year in jail, as you know, after being convicted on terror-related charges in a trial that really was widely seen as a sham. Last week, he was released on bail. And now, as he prepares for his second trial, he sat down with Gillian Findlay of the Fifth Estate for his first television interview. And Gillian is here in studio to talk about that interview. I'm always curious about blame, you know. Where does he point the finger? Who or at what for his time in prison? Well, we know, because in, since he's been out on bail, he has been very critical of uh, Prime Minister mm -hmm. Harper in particular. So we know he feels that the Canadian government has not exactly done everything they might have done to, to get him out of the situation he's in. He hasn't been deported, unlike his Australian colleague who was deported back to mm -hmm. Australia. But what we talk about in the interview, what's new, I think, uh, he's not had an opportunity to talk about this. He always, also has a lot of blame that he puts on his employer. Now, that's Al Jazeera mm. Network. I'm going to dick and jane this yeah, for you because okay. it's complicated, but uh, this, is, this is why. Al Jazeera is owned and operated by Qatar, the government of Qatar. Qatar and the military rulers in Egypt have a long and acrimonious relationship. Uh, Qatar is seen to be promoting mm -hmm. the Muslim Brotherhood and using Al Jazeera as a, as a, uh, a means voice. of... Yeah. Yes, exactly. When Mohammed went to work for, for uh, Al Jazeera, he was working for the English network. Mm -hmm. The Egyptians had just shut down the Egyptian network, and he wanted to put as much uh, distance between them and distinction uh, as he could. Um, but he feels that his employer really let him down. He said it wasn't clear at all to him that they were properly licensed. They weren't providing proper journalistic credentials for their people, and because they were Al Jazeera, they were in danger in the street, he said. Mm -hmm. at, particularly in those days. And worse, they were taking their packages, their stories, and running them on the banned network. Now, he says, look, at, that just made us sitting ducks. When the government saw that, they had every reason to think that there was no distinction between these two yeah. networks, that we, were, we really were part of this Muslim Brotherhood sympathizers, and that's why we were charged as mm -hmm. sympathizers with terrorists. You know, he spent 400 days in there, and when Peter Gresta, and you mentioned his colleague from Australia, was released, he, he didn't really share a lot of stories about the time yeah. there in prison. Did Mohammed Fahmy do any of that? Did he tell you stories about those 400 days? He did. He told us in particular about that first month. Yeah. He was taken, because of the charges, he was taken to what's uh, the most notorious uh, prison in Cairo called Scorpion. Mm. He was put in an isolation ward, solitary confinement for a month, didn't have a watch, didn't have any way of knowing what time of day it was. He said that was really hard. He said, you know, you just, you, you, you don't know whether you can get through this. And you can imagine what the conditions sure. of an Egyptian prison might be like. Um, and you learn all kinds of things about yourself. But he said the really interesting thing was, because he was in this wing with all these alleged uh, ter terrorists, uh, including people who had just come in from Syria, members of ISIS, mm. people who would uh, had an affiliation with al-Qaeda, he said, as a journalist, it was fascinating. Mm. And he said, here I was, and I could talk to these people and learn about what they thought and why, and I didn't have to worry about being kidnapped or, as he's joked, having my head cut off. So mm. he said, in that... That sort of um, intellectual stimulation, he said, really helped him get through that time. Yeah. His trial, uh, Jillian, we mentioned at the beginning in the intro, scheduled to start in three days, so that is Monday. How is he feeling about that? He's, he's going into next week with a lot of trepidation. We asked him in the interview, and I think we have a clip so you can hear okay. for yourself. You do go to retrial next week. Having um, gone through a trial already, uh, do you have faith in the Egyptian judicial system uh, to give you a fair trial, to, to have this turn out in a different way this time? You know, it would be very naive for anyone to believe that we are going to be acquitted because Al Jazeera remains in the minds of Egyptians as a public enemy number one. You know, that, that's, that's where it stops. I'm hopeful that the process will be expedited and that you know we're we're trying to wonder what the scenarios are going to be of course we want to be exonerated but i don't see it happening he doesn't think he's going to get exonerated wow. by the court he's made that clear and that's why he has been so insistent in in the uh the interviews he has done uh, we were the first television interview yep. but he has done others uh he's still calling on the canadian government and on uh, prime minister harper in particular to pick up the phone to mm -hmm. talk to Egypt's presidents to see if they could get a deportation so he doesn't actually have to go Has to trial. Has there been any other word from the PMO? 
Not that I've heard, and not that he's heard, yeah. more importantly. He said, you know, he, he has been requesting this for months now. Yep. And uh, he's very uh, complimentary about the consular staff in, mm. at the embassy in, in Cairo. He thinks they've really worked hard, but he just does not understand why Stephen Harper, you know, can't seem see his way to picking up that phone. He said uh, the Australian Prime yep. Minister did it, he did. and Peter was released. There's no guarantees, but he said at least he could try. All right, thank you, Gillian. Thank Jillian you. Finley right here in studio. And you can hear more from Mohamed Fahmy in his first television interview since his release. So watch The Fifth Estate tonight on CBC Television, 9 p.m., 9.30 in Newfoundland. Or check out the show's webpage. You'll get more information there. Just go to cbc.ca backslash fifth.